What is going on my friends? Ryan Williams here back with another one and in today's video we are going to be talking about one particular dividend stock with a super high dividend yield and three reasons why you should consider adding it to your portfolio. Now the stock we're talking about today is actually an ETF and it's one that I was referred to by a lot of you guys in the comments section actually. And I know you guys may be surprised to hear me talking about any ETFs because you guys know me. I love my individual dividend stocks but I do believe this one has some merit and I'm actually considering adding it to my own portfolio. Anyway, before we get rocking and rolling, give this video a big, big thumbs up if you guys love dividend stocks with super high dividend yields, just like the one we're talking about today. It's got like a seven plus percent dividend yield. And also please do me a quick favor and hit that subscribe button as well if you guys would be interested in seeing more dividend stock investing content from me. At this point, I'm putting out videos twice a week. I upload every Wednesday and every Sunday without skipping a beat, so there's a lot of good dividend stock content coming your way and I would love to have all of you guys along for my dividend investing journey. Anyway, thank you guys so much for doing that and now, without further ado, let's get into it. All right, guys, it's time for the big reveal. Now, the dividend stock we are gonna be covering in today's video is the JP Morgan Equity Premium Income ETF, more famously known simply as JEPI. Now, as I mentioned in the intro, I first heard about this ETF from a lot of you guys just recommending it to me in the comments section. So I'm sure a lot of you guys are already pretty familiar with this ETF, but for those of you who have never heard of it, um, it is an ETF that uses a combination of option premiums and dividends to generate monthly passive income for its investors. And it also has a really sweet dividend, which we will talk about momentarily. But before we get to that, just a little bit more on JEPI. It currently has 100 holdings consisting of a combination of ELNs or equity link notes, which we'll talk more on later, and other companies within the S&P 500 index. And to give more of a general broad overview of JEPI and how it operates, we can refer to this blurb from the actual JP Morgan website specific for JEPI. As you guys can see on the screen, there are three little bullet points, which we'll read. The first one says, JEPI generates income through a combination of selling options and investing in U.S. large cap stocks, seeking to deliver a monthly income stream from associated option premiums and stock dividends. Bullet point number two, JEPI constructs a diversified low volatility, this is important, low volatility equity portfolio through a proprietary research process designed to identify over and undervalued stocks with attractive risk return characteristics. Number three, this is a key point as well, JEPI seeks to deliver a significant portion of the returns associated with the S&P 500 index with less volatility in addition to monthly income. So that is JEPI in a nutshell, guys. And if those three bullet points we just talked about were confusing to you, don't worry. We'll break that down a little bit more as we go through the video. Um, but now let's move on and get into the three reasons why I think this could be a good addition to any dividend stock investor's portfolio. Now, reason number one, from owning JEPI, you as the investor can benefit both from capital appreciation, which means the share price going up as time goes on, as well as monthly dividend income. That's right. They pay their dividends every single month. Now, just sticking to the capital appreciation side, as we learned a moment ago, JEPI aims to track the performance of the S&P 500 index, but as we'll see in just a moment, it actually underperforms it quite a bit. And with that said, it does outperform some other covered call ETFs, which we could consider some of JEPI's competitors like QYLD and XYLD, which we'll also take a look at. But first things first, let's compare JEPI's performance in the last year to that of the S&P 500 index. And to do that, we will use, or at least for the s and 500 index part, we will use SPY, which is an ETF that directly tracks the S&P. Um, and as you can see in the last year, SPY was up about 29%. And moving on to the next screenshot here, JEPI was only up about 16%. So there's about a 13% discrepancy here. But one important thing to keep in mind is the blurb that we read a moment ago from the JP Morgan website says, and a direct quote, JEPI seeks to deliver a significant portion of the returns associated with the S&P 500 index with less volatility. So worded like that, I think it makes sense that we're seeing it underperform the S&P 500. And we also may just from what we've read expect less volatility than what we would see with the S&P 500 index. And then moving on, comparing JEPI to some of its competitors, XYLD and QYLD, we can see that while JEPI was up about 16% in the last year, XYLD here was up only about 11.3%. So what is that? That's about a, oh, about a four, little over a 4% difference. And moving on to QYLD, which was up only 4% in the last year, that is a much bigger discrepancy. What is that, about 12%? So JEPI considerably outperformed 
outperformed uh, QYLD and then also I would say considerably outperformed XYLD as well. Now switching gears and getting to the dividend yield side of things, while Jeppy's competitors do have a higher dividend yield, both QYLD and XYLD have a dividend yield between like 9.6 and 9.8 percent. Jeppy still has a pretty impressively high dividend yield currently sitting at 7.5 5-3%, which we can see on the right-hand side of this screenshot here, which is actually higher than most dividend-paying stocks. So I personally am still pretty happy with this dividend yield coming from this ETF. And taking all of these factors into consideration, if we were to look forward and predict the returns of Jeppy over time, I think we'd actually be pretty pleased with the results. Now I'm going to give you guys an example scenario. So imagine that we have $10,000 invested into Jeppy, okay, with dividends reinvested across 20 years, we'll say 20 years time. Um, and we can account for, let's say, an average of 8% appreciation year over year over year across those 20 years. Using Jeppy's current dividend rate of 7.53%, and in this example scenario, let's say there's like no dividend growth across the 20 years, which may or may not be the case, I don't know. But as you guys can see on the screen, just from investing $10,000 into Jeppy without any additional contributions across those 20 years, after 20 years, you would have $172,135.62 in your portfolio. And just in that 20th year, you will have an annual dividend income of about $13,500, which is pretty unreal. That's more than what you initially contributed. Now, I personally think that's pretty sweet, especially considering you only put $10,000 into this and just let it do its thing. And let's look at another example with pretty much the same setup, except the only difference is you're investing an additional $100 every single month on top of that initial $10,000 contribution. So let's look at the data for that. And after those 20 years, instead of having 172,000, you will have 302,000 $17.53. And then instead of $13,500 being your dividend income in that 20th year, you will be making about $10,000 more than that, $23,584.90. Now, obviously, guys, this is just an example scenario, and we really can't say that all these numbers are going to be accurate or this is what you'd actually end up with because there are so many, so many factors that go into this. I mean, we have no way of knowing that it's going to grow 8% every year on average. That's just an average number. The dividend yield may go up or down as time goes on. This isn't taking into account the ETF's expense ratio, which we will talk about pretty soon. And in general, guys, there's just a lot of unknowns that were not taken into account for this scenario. So please keep that in mind. But if the stars align and this was how it played out, I, I personally would be a pretty happy camper with this. All right, now moving on to reason number two, I think, Jeppy, could be a good addition to your dividend portfolio is because it is better diversified than some of its other competitors, and we can use the same ones that we referenced earlier, QYLD and XYLD. Um, but before we compare it with those, let's just look at the sector exposure for Jeppy. As you guys can see on the screen, everything for the most part looks pretty balanced. Um, consumer staples, financials, healthcare, industrials, infotech, that's all sitting at about the same allocation. Um, there's some that are lower like real estate or utilities or even consumer discretionary and communications is a little bit lower. Energy is basically non-existent in this fund. And then we have other, which is the highest allocation at 15.4%. But for the most part, guys, this ETF seems pretty balanced across sectors. And moving on, if we look at Jeppy's top 10 holdings, we can see the first five there are these weird SPX 3, 4, 1, 10, 2. Um, and then the rest of them are companies that should be pretty familiar to you guys. Intuit, Microsoft, Accenture. I don't know DTE Energy personally, but I know some of you guys probably do. And then Alphabet, Google right there at the bottom. And just sticking with the first five of the top 10 holdings for a second. So remember the former screenshot, guys. The other category or sector was 15.4%. And if we add all of these numbers of the SPX, um, these stocks here, it's going to add up to that 15.4%. So these SPX stocks or funds, whatever they are, make up the biggest allocation of this fund. And maybe you guys remember as we were getting into this video, I mentioned something called ELNs or equity link notes. And that's what these XPX 3, 4, 1, 10, 2, these are these ELNs that we talked about earlier. And what these are, I'm still learning about them, but uh, essentially what they are, it's an investment product that combines a fixed income investment with additional potential returns that are tied to the performance of the equities. So, and to expand on that a little bit more and break down how these ELNs work, let's read from this screenshot that I found on investopedia.com that breaks it down a little bit better than I could by myself, to be honest with you guys. So the screenshot reads, in the simplest form, a $1,000 five-year equity link note, or ELN, 
could be structured to use $800 of the fund to buy a five-year strip bond with a four and a half yield to maturity and then invest and reinvest the other 200 in call options for the S&P 500 over the five-year life of the note. There's a chance that the options will expire worthless, in which case the investor gets back the $1,000 initially put in. If, however, the options appreciate in value with the S&P 500, those returns are added to the $1,000 that will eventually be returned to the investor. So with these ELNs, it really doesn't seem like there's too much downside. And whoever manages the, these equity link notes trades options on them. And then if, if the options turn out to do pretty well, the investor will get a percentage of that. And if they don't, then the investor will get their original investment back. And the inclusion of these ELNs in this fund is one of the things that really separates Jeppy from the other two ETFs that we've been referencing throughout the video. And moving on to those, I don't think the diversification of those two other ETFs, QYLD and XYLD, are as ideal as Jeppy's. This is just my opinion. But if we take a look at the top 10 holdings, we'll start with QYLD. You guys can see here that it is pretty much all tech stocks, okay? And if you add up those net assets there on the left, those percentages, it adds up to like 50% of the fund. So um, just reading this, 50% of this ETF is just allocated to one sector, the tech sector, which in my opinion makes it a little more volatile. Now, keep in mind, these are also covered called ETFs. So not only does QILD own all these stocks, but it's writing covered calls on them to generate more income. And that's probably why they're able to generate a higher dividend yield than Jeppy, who does not trade options on every single holding in the fund. And moving on to XYLD, we can see that there's a similar story here. The bulk of the top 10 holdings here are tech stocks. Uh, and if we add up the net assets there on the left, just from Apple all the way down to Tesla, what is that? 6, 12, 15, uh, 19, probably 25% or so, which is not as heavily allocated to technology as QYLD is, but uh, you know, it's more or less the same same batch of stocks right there. And I, and I still like the, the diversification of Jeppy better than what I'm seeing here. But once again, guys, this is just my personal opinion. And there's going to be a lot of you out there, I'm sure, who would probably benefit more from holding XYLD and QYLD, or maybe you like those funds better. And that's totally fine. Anyway, guys, moving on to reason number three, I think Jeppy makes for a pretty good investment, especially over the other two ETFs that we were just talking about, is because it has a considerably lower expense ratio than that of the other covered call ETFs. And we don't have to spend a lot of time talking about reason number three because it is pretty straightforward. But to explain the difference to you guys, Jeppy has a, an expense ratio of 0.35% compared to that of QYLD and XYLD, which have an expense ratio each of 0.6%. And to give some more perspective on how these expense ratios can affect your investment, so Jeppy's expense ratio, like I just said, is 0.35%. And so what this means is for every $10,000 you have invested, you will be paying $35 every single year. So if you have 10 grand in there, you're gonna be paying $35 a year. You know, if you have 20 grand the next year, you're gonna be paying $70 a year and so on and so forth. So the more you have invested into this fund, the more you're gonna pay for the expense ratio. All right, guys, now those were the three reasons I think Jeppy makes for a pretty good investment as far as covered call ETFs go, or even as far as just general dividend stocks go. And now I'd like to switch gears and talk about who should buy this ETF? Who should consider adding Jeppy to their portfolio? Now, first of all, instead of just writing covered calls on the index, it combines the ELN approach, which we talked about earlier, with collecting dividends from the other stocks that it has in the fund to generate monthly passive income for whoever invests in it, which is obviously good for investors like myself, whose primary goal is to generate more you know, passive income or generate more cash flow from owning these investments. So it's gonna be really good for any dividend investor who's looking to bump up their yield a little bit, because remember, it's almost a 8% dividend yield. What did, what did I say earlier? 7.53% to be exact. So it's got a really high yield and chances are by owning this, you're going to be bumping up the dividend yield of your own portfolio if that's something you're into. The other great thing is that the shares of this ETF do continue to grow over time, at least have done so so far. So you will benefit from some capital appreciation from owning this stock, which is good for any sort of growth investor or people who get their kicks seeing the share price of their stocks go up. And actually it seemingly will do so with lower volatility because of just how balanced the fund is like we saw earlier. And lastly, because options trading is part of the strategy of this ETF, this could be a good ETF to own for someone with no exposure to options trading who maybe doesn't know how to do it or maybe doesn't want to take the time to do it themselves or and you know wants to leave it to someone who does this for a living. Jeppy essentially offers a pretty inexpensive way to benefit from options trading and you also get the great minds at JP Morgan behind you managing this fund, which is always a good thing. So in a nutshell, guys, really anyone can benefit from owning this ETF. However, I do think it is primarily suited best for income investors 
people who are looking to generate more dividend income. And that's one of the reasons I'm considering adding it to my own portfolio. I haven't completely decided if it's something I'd like to do yet, but uh, the yield makes it tempting and the, and the research that I've done so far makes it seem like it would be a good investment or a good place to park some cash instead of just having it sit in my checking account. And with that said, guys, that pretty much wraps it up for today's video. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching this one and learned a little something as well. And before you click on to the next video, do me a favor, guys, leave me a comment below. Let me know what are your thoughts on Jeppy or covered call ETF ETFs in general? Do you think they're a good thing to implement into your portfolio? You have some beef with covered called ETFs? Let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear your thoughts. And if you have not done so already, please don't forget to leave a thumbs up on this video before clicking on to the next one. And if you're not sick of me just yet, please consider hitting that subscribe button as well. I would love to have you along for more of my videos. So with that said, guys, I will now get out of your hair, but thank you once again so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Hope you guys have a great day and I will see you in the next one.